Welcome back, everybody, to Anderton's TV. We are using digital products today, so it's only appropriate that my uh, holographic offspring has in, been invited in to uh, shoot some video with I'm us. I'm back. He's hello, back. Hello, hello. Digital John. Digital John. Um, so, I know you guys love a cheapest versus most expensive video. It doesn't matter what we're comparing. Uh, you love it when the, uh, the cheap underdog goes up against the big daddy. Uh, so mm. this is what we're doing today. Uh, we've got uh, the neural quad cortex uh, yep. at 1,600 English pounds, including VAT. Uh, currently, actually, our number one best-selling item in the entire world of anderton's Wow. Um, and has been for about the last year. Uh, anyway, that's the quad cortex over here. Sorry, yeah, mine, this is the one I gig with, so it's got a bit of bit muck of, on bit it. A bit of dribble Sorry. on it. Um, John's obviously very familiar with, with this, so that's going to be good. Versus... And this. Yes, you're very familiar yeah. with this. Versus our uh, favourite affordable um, guitar effects unit in the Veilton GP200 LT for light, um, weighing in at a spectacularly affordable £250. So there is a, there is a £1,350 differential yeah. in terms of money between these two. Um, is it worth it? That's what you're going to decide now. You know, the, 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 I think this will be an interesting demonstration. I, I think what we'll see um, when we get to the end of this is that the and the cheap stuff, and this doesn't matter whether it's amps or guitars or effects, or whatever, but the, the, the cheap stuff is getting better at a phenomenal rate over rate, the... Yeah. It, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Digital John. And the expensive stuff gets better, but maybe at a slightly sort of more modest rate as it's perhaps yeah. more difficult to, to pioneer at that end of the technology. Anyway, uh, that little opening demo was a, was, a, was a patch that we very, very quickly threw together to compare um, a, a heavily overdriven and a reverby delayed kind of yeah. Mesa Boogie Mark IV emulationi. Um, now, I think the best thing that we can do on here, John, mm -hmm. is to delete all of the amps and everything on both units and very quickly fast forward edit up some basic similar sounding patches. So we'll go, you know, the usual Fender Deluxe, Marshall, Plexi, um, something heavy, perhaps we might use Boogie again, cool. uh, something Voxy, that kind yep. of thing, and just see what we do. Um, we'll cover off some of the there's definitely are some more sort of professional specs on the QC that you just wouldn't need if you were just, you know, going down the, the effects unit for the first time. Uh, but hey, next time you see us, we'll have a Fender sound ready to go. Here we go. Right, so our first comparison here is uh, we've chosen um, a captured uh, sound, the captured sound of uh, a Fender Blackface Deluxe. Yeah, so the one that comes with the unit. Yeah, not a third yeah, party one. Yeah, we haven't one. downloaded yeah. one or anything. No. So yeah, these, these are both straight out the box um, things that you can do. And on the Veilton, we've chosen the what they call the Dark Deluxe, which again is their sort of Blackface Deluxe um, model, with a little bit of spring reverb on each one, again, from the units. Mm -hmm. um, haven't really... This is a relatively bland patch you know we haven't sort of added anything spicy or anything there's no drives yeah. no other pedals but let's have a little listen so here's a here's the neural and the veilton Interestingly, the the QC just has, I think, just a fatter uh, sense like of a low range, end thing. yeah, like a thickness to it, if you like, rather than a certain EQ as such. Mm -hmm. um, Do the dynamics thing. I think 
slightly more of a range on the Neural, but they both have quite a lot. So let's just try adding, whilst we're on clean sounds, let's, let's just add a simple overdrive pedal to the front and maybe we'll add some delay as well. Yeah, I don't know. It's not, I mean, it is mad, isn't it? In the sense of like the differentials between the top end and the, and, uh, of the price range, I mean, and, mm. the, and the bottom end of the price range. Oh, so they're, they're quite insignificant, you know, quite small, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think it's about the interface of the units. Like, I love the like touchscreen and touch tactile screen, thing. It's yeah. the best of both. I don't have touchscreen on this, yeah. I agree. Uh, and let's add some delay in whilst you're doing that. So okay. I'm going to go with a, let's go ping pong because we're in stereo, right? Yep. So we go slightly mad, ping pong delays. Oh, oh, it's a top. lot brighter and thinner sounding, isn't it? The delay on the. Can you um, do the old parameter? Uh, I don't have tone. No, no you I've don't. just no. Um, so that obviously is just a, a preset kind of element of you know sound of the ping pong delay. Mm. I mean, it's a good thing, right, that we're making <laughs> that we're seeing this well, one sound yeah. a little better than this one. Otherwise, that would confuse people. Um, so uh, modulation, let's just let's cool. get that real '80s kind of chorus, yeah. kind of clean sound, and then I'm just going to go with a. Oh, I've got loads of different chorus options here. What are your chorus options? Oh, chorus <laughs> options. Sean Connery chorus. Yeah. Right. So there we go. Now we just got this very classic '80s kind of chorusy type um, clean tone. Mm. I should say we're, we're absolutely using what we think is the sort of undisputed best of the best at the top end versus the sort of the best mm. of the best at the bottom end. So I'm kind of expecting to, to sort of enjoy both of them. It's yeah. really odd. There's, 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 there's just a slight sense of fullness on the QC that, that is missing on the, on the veil tone. Yeah. But hard to argue that you'd pay, you know, six times as much, whatever it works out, five times as much for this as you would for this. Six yeah. times as much. Um, right. Let's How vivid can that go? How like what, like mad can the chorus go? Yeah, we, we can have a look here. So modulation has got rate, depth, volume, and the ability to sync depth, fast, uh, volume, high. I don't know how mad, how mad do you want it to go, Liz? Yeah, almost Leslie, that. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Um, right, another little uh, intermission here, um, and we'll come back with a Vox AC30 style. Okay, so we've just saved uh, basically our sort of Voxy um, interpretations. We've used the Vox Top Boost uh, models, which are the sort of the, the essentially the, the, get the gained up. Um, Vox amps. I always feel like, you know, Vox Vox models are hard to do on digital equipment because mm. there's so many sort of layers of harmonics within that kind of Vox sound. But let's have a little listen to uh, what uh, the neural Vox vibe is compared to the uh, Veilton one. G chord. <laughs> It's classic. The, the, the Veil 10 is doing that thing, I think, the older, sort of more affordable, which is they have this squidged in boxy kind of driven tone, yeah. trying to sound like a Vox that never normally does. And the, and the, and the, the Cor Cortex thing is actually doing a much more... Uh, I, th I think you can, you can tell on the, on the yeah. Veil 10 it's trying to sound like a Vox. It definitely has the essence. Yeah, I whereas yeah. I think on the QC, it sort of, it, it does sound... I mean, let's just put a drive in front of it i'll leave you to choose what you fancy but just something that's maybe 
um, more like a boosty drive rather than a full on distortion, distortion. drive. And let's see uh, what it sounds like. I'm just going to put a noise reduction on here. You can hear, obviously, that we've got a lot of gain now. So I put the noise reduction on uh, and that gets rid of that. What does your Vox with a bit of drive in the front end sound like? <coughs> Nice and fizzy, yeah. Loads of I, sustain. I'm, I'm giving a first prize to the uh, Quad Cortex for its Vox emulation, because <laughs> I, I said, not my favorite one on the, the Veilton, but now let's move into perhaps um, some more familiar territory for guitar players. Let's go with like a big, fat, juicy, old school Marshall. So let's see what we've got in terms of Plexi Marshalls. Okay, so here we are back again. A very quick uh, Marshall Super Lead on both. And then uh, with, you know, not loads and loads of gain, but, you know, gain around about sort of six or seven um, and into a, a vintage 4x12 cabinet with a teeny bit of reverb. And then we'll add a we'll add some sort of tube screamer in the front. Yeah. So what's your uh, Marshy? Sounds like this. <laughs> And uh, this one. Much darker, isn't it? Quite sounding? dark, yeah. Um, try a bit harder. With let's that. try adding <coughs> a distortion pedal. I'm going to go. You, should we just always use the tube screamer just yeah. for sort of. Um, I've got gain at middle, tone at seven. Uh, gain at seven. Sorry. Yeah, both middle and then tone at seven. Okie dokie. Let's try it now. Treble, doesn't it? Mm. The um... can I have a little strummeroo on this? Just strummeroo. Why not? Um, I mean, I'm kind of feeling like the Veilton is holding up remarkably well given yeah. its price. Sounds like somebody's thrown a blanket over it, doesn't it? You can still tell you're playing the Les Paul through. That's a good shout. That is a good shout. Right, transparent enough to um, show the guitar. I wonder, I wonder if, again, the cabinet is one of the things that's just making it incredibly dark. Let's try a different, uh, let's try a different cabinet. <laughs> Uh, not especially. Don't you? Yeah. It is interesting, isn't it? It's <clears throat> just, it's a bit like when you play like a 250 pound guitar versus a 1500 pound guitar and you sort of go, yeah, it's like the initial impressions are that there's not much of a difference between them. And you're thinking, wow, this 250 pound one is amazing value. And then the more you play it, yeah. And the more you familiarize yourself with it, the more you start to find the things on the dearer one that maybe just starts to make you think, oh, no, okay, I get it now. I can see why I would want to own this yeah. more expensive product. Let's just go for the last one and then we'll do a quick, quick roundup at the end of sort of other noticeable features that are different. But we'll dive on over to um, something high gain and you yeah. can noodle out on that one because I can't play that kind of stuff.
So, and just to play us out now, uh, we've gone high gain uh, yep. from the Dizzle. The Dizzles. The Dizzle Rascal. Um, and yeah, so we've both got diesel uh, amplifiers here, lots of gain, very, you know, super high gain, bit fizzy. Uh, and just because, because we've thrown phasers in the front of them uh, to give it that slightly eddy vibe. Um, yeah. And let's go. just play out and then, well, I play a little bit and then we'll just do, do our little conclusions. <laughs> Where did that go? <laughs> and... They both feel great, actually. They're so look, just to recap here, okay, we're playing both units straight out of the box. Yep. Just using features that you can, you know, dial in without having to download anything extra. Both of them are just going straight into our um, computer interface and into a pair of um, monitors. Mm -hmm. um, many people, I think, possibly more so with the with the lower end multi effects units than these. Many people will just choose to run them into the front of a guitar amplifier as well, yeah. which is totally fine. In fact, if you've got a little practice amplifier or something like that and you it's a little bit underwhelming sounding, often something like this is the absolute best way to kind of spice up and give you a ton of new sounds that you never mm. realized you had. Um, I don't I mean, functionality, of course, I'm sure, you know, blue, uh, not Bluetooth, touch screen, um, it's a slightly more impressive IR loader here. You can have more effects chained yeah. up together. You can have four separate signal paths going through. The app's through. super handy, like the Wi-Fi connectivity. I know you've got the like computer suite with the Veilton, which is it's great really as well. Good. Yeah, I mean, Veilton videos are up there if you want to watch them, and I'm sure if in the description below we'll link to Quad Cortex videos as well. There are two versions of this GP200. We've got the cheaper of the two. Mm -hmm. uh, for about another 50 pounds, you can have another one with uh, more buttons and an expression pedal on the side. Yep. But it doesn't, the, the software inside it is identical. Um, have we talked about the outs at the back? So QC XLRs, which are kind of crucial, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, these are balanced TRS output. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, and again, true. the dearer version of this has XLR outputs. Yep. Um, both got MIDI, both got USB. Uh, this has got a single effects loop and the option to put two expression pedals in it. I think you can do more with this, can't you? In terms yeah, you can of do two loops. expression. Uh, oh, yeah, there's tons of send and return stuff you can do, yeah. Yeah, so it's a slightly sort of more fuller featured uh, unit. Mm. Um, I mean, from a usability point of view, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm mixed really. I think they've done an amazing job on the Veilton of, of yeah. keeping the screen really intuitive and obvious what you want to adjust. And these um, quick reference buttons here, so you know, if you want to go to the amp, you just press the amp button and mm. away you go. Do, do make this one of the simplest, if not the simplest, of all of the kind of the non touch screen units that we've tried. As soon as you move into touch screen, I think it opens up another level of intuitiveness that's yeah. nice to navigate around. Um, it's nice to be able to do like, I want that to happen and you do it. Because I can remember when we first opened this up, we were like, I want that to move. <laughs> and of, you could have. Of course, one of the biggest features on the Neural, which we glossed over completely, is Neural has the ability to capture amps. So you can take an yep. actual amplifier and do a, a um, if you're familiar with this kind of technology, Kemper call it profiling, Neural call it capture. It's ostensibly doing the same um, type of thing. Uh, Veilton can't do that, although Veilton does have IRs, so you can load in cabinet um, responses, but the, mm -hmm. the basic amplifiers themselves, you just have to choose from a list of, of preset ones. Yeah. But yeah, look, this was supposed to just be a bit of fun. 250 versus, you know, 1600 quid. Um, is there yeah. a winner? You decide, I, I, I think, you know, the neural, continues to be the, the, the most popular effects unit in the higher end for us. And, and I think even globally, you know, most pro players are, are, you know, seem to have loving this unit at the moment. Yeah. But I still think if Bang you're- Bang for your money, like that's amazing. It is nuts, sure. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, well, does anything anymore. The, 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 I don't think you can even say because it's 
six times the price, therefore it has to sound six times better. Nah. It just has to sound enough better for yeah. you to want to want spending the money. But there we are, GP200 LT. QC. QC from Neural, links below if you want to buy any. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Digital John, for coming in Thank again. Thank you very much. We shall see you in another video soon.